Welcome to Tech Up. I'm your host, Sarah Ingram, and this week we're bringing you news and reviews on apps, peripherals, gadgets, and more. Here's what we have for you this week. A man-made object gets close to infinity and beyond. A phone might take learning to a whole new level. Transformers might really be robots in disguise. And a new contact lens might keep you healthy. We also take a look at some mobile apps, both free and paid, that were suggested by you, the viewer, before talking about viruses to Mike at Brilliance Computer Technologies in another Ask a Pro segment. Right now, it's time to get up to date on this week's download. Set your phasers to awesome, because the first man-made object has made its way to interstellar space. In 2012, NASA's Voyager 1 probe became the first man-made object to leave the solar system, catapulting itself into the farthest reaches of the universe. Or so we thought. It's a little confusing, because scientists don't exactly agree on where our solar system ends. Now though, we know NASA's position on the subject. Although the probe has yet to leave the solar system, it's entered interstellar space, a part of the universe the human race has never reached. It isn't piloted by Captain Janeway, but it's still a very cool advancement in our knowledge of space. Now don't hold your breath waiting for it to leave our solar system. Estimates say it could take up to 28,000 years. Get your aluminum foil hats ready, because scientists with the Defense Department have just announced a new brain hacking technology. This new breakthrough could allow researchers to create in 220 days an extremely detailed picture of the brain that previously would have taken 80 years of scans to complete. Scientists said that it could mark a new era of rapid brain imaging, allowing researchers to see in much greater detail not only how parts of the brain interact on a cellular level, but also to better understand those interactions across the entire brain. The military has been looking to build better brain hacks for decades, with results that range from the frightening to the comical. This latest development could revolutionize the study of the brain, but also the national security applications of neuroscience. I must admit, a new way to map brain activity is really cool, and something really helpful to science. Let's just hope it doesn't get into the wrong hands. How cool would it be to point your phone at a bug and find out if it's poisonous or just really creepy? Microsoft Research introduced Project Atom, an AI machine learning object recognition software, at its 2014 Microsoft Research Faculty Summit. The goal of Project Atom is to enable software to visually recognize any object. It's an ambitious project given the immense neural network in human brains that makes those kinds of associations possible through trillions of connections. The researchers did a live demo of Project Atom, where they aimed the phone at a breed of dog and asked Cortana, what type of dog is this? She was actually able to identify the breed. I can't even do that. Project Atom generated a massive data set of 14 million images from the web and sites such as Flickr, made up of more than 22,000 categories drawn from user-generated tags. That's a lot of dog breeds. Ever want to find out how many calories your meal has without going through the rigmarole of calculating every single ingredient? General Electric might soon have a solution for you. Your next microwave might be able to measure exactly how healthy or not your food is. Researchers at General Electric have developed a device that can quickly measure the calories in your food by utilizing just three pieces of information, fat content, water content, and weight. From this data, it's able to approximate the calories of your meal, and the team at General Electric Research is hoping to eventually incorporate the technology into appliances like microwaves. Right now, it only works on blended foods, but hopefully soon you'll know exactly how guilty you should feel about that burger you're about to stuff in your face. I can't wait! Google and Novartis have announced an agreement to collaborate on the development of the smart contact lens that was unveiled by Google X in January. Using non-invasive sensors, the lens promises to analyze tear fluid in the eye to provide constant measurements of a person's blood glucose levels. Those can then be sent wirelessly to a mobile device and help diabetics manage their disease more easily. This is in the process of being licensed, so hopefully it'll be available commercially soon. Now I've always been a little freaked out by contact lenses, but this might be able to change my mind. Google co-founder Sergey Brin has said that his company is very excited to work with Novartis on using the latest technology in the miniaturization of electronics to help improve the quality of life for millions of people. Futurama, anyone? 
If the writing style on Wikipedia ever sounds a little robotic, there might actually be a reason as to why. An increasing number of entries on Wikipedia are being authored by automated software, or bots. They pull raw information from databases, then use algorithms to generate text in standardized templates. In fact, according to a recent Wall Street Journal report, a single bot program in Sweden has written more than 2.7 million articles on Wikipedia, or about 8.5% of their total collection. There are over 1,600 bots out in the Wikipedia world. These bots do have their critics, but depending on the topic, I can certainly see how they could be useful. Now, how do I get my hands on one for my graduate thesis? In the future, transforming robots might be a good way to get out of tight spots, and no, I'm not talking about a Decepticon invasion. A new Terminator T-1000 robot-style material made of wax and foam, and capable of switching between hard and soft states, could be used to build morphing surgical robots that move through the body to reach a desired location, without damaging organs or vessels along the way. Robots built from the material, described in a new paper in the journal Macromolecular Materials and Engineering, could also be used in search and rescue operations to squeeze through rubble looking for survivors. Let's just hope these robots are friendlier than the ones Skynet created. Don't go anywhere, because after the break, I'll be back with your requested apps on the recap.